Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm going to introduce a new technology called Anvil. Anvil is a platform or framework for building full stack web applications with only Python. So the server side code is in Python. The client side code is also in Python. You can also store your data for your app using a database system built on top of PostgreSQL. Just to be clear, Anvil is a web GUI tool where you can drag and drop elements to build your web application in a matter of minutes. Plus, you can deploy it immediately. The idea behind Anvil, according to its founder, is that the way we create web applications is not efficient enough. And as I am myself a Pythonist, I was intrigued by this idea of creating full stack web applications using only Python code, back end and front end. So let me show you first a few slides that will illustrate the idea behind Anvil and then we'll jump to create a web application using Anvil GUI tool. Okay, so the journey starts from your database where you have your data stored in rows and columns in MySQL database, for example. Then you turn these data into objects on the server. They have properties and methods. And of course, you don't leave them as objects, but you have to turn them into JSON format. And you can send them to Django REST framework or any other REST framework using HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete. On the other side of HTTP connection, there is JavaScript that's going to turn JSON into JavaScript objects with other methods and properties. Then we will have to transform that into HTML DOM for the browser to render it and CSS to turn it into pixels. And this is quite a lot of representation of your data and a lot to do by a full stack web developer really. There are a lot of transformations here which are somehow repetitive and annoying. You have to learn frameworks, markup languages, JavaScript, plus if you want to use something like Docker containers with MySQL in Mac, Windows, or any Linux distro, it's a big headache. Okay, good, but how could Anvil do a better job? So instead of HTML, CSS, and its many frameworks, this will be substituted by Visual UI Builder in Python. As I told you, it's a GUI drag and drop system and you don't have to worry about anything else. Also, the client side part is written in Python, compiled from Python to JavaScript under the hood. Of course, everything on the server side, so you don't have to convert your Python dictionaries to JSON, then to JavaScript objects. And also, Anvil has a Python native database, so you can access your records as Python objects, and it's built on top of PostgreSQL. Now, I'm not saying that Anvil must replace all of these technologies, or if it's good or bad thing. I'm only presenting Anvil because this might be suitable for a lot of companies who don't want to be bothered by the different frameworks, libraries, and languages, and can work only with Python. And it's for Anvil to compile everything to the browser, store data in the database, and run the application live. Anvil also might be a great solution for a lot of new startups who want to have their app up and running quickly. So let's go ahead and create a feedback form using Anvil. And this application can be built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and using MySQL or MongoDB for database persistence. But as you will see how fast Anvil can create everything for you in a matter of minutes. You will need obviously to have an account. So once you create your account, you will be sent an email to verify that this is your email. You will click on the link that they will send you and you will be good to go. So go ahead and enter your email address and your password. And this is the final application that we're supposed to create right now. So let's go ahead and click on new blank app and go ahead and click on material design. All right, so we have our website or web application empty. We have just this, um, this bar uh, on the top and we're going to modify and drag and drop stuff. Um, hopefully it will be quick. So we'll need to construct the UI by dragging and dropping some components from this toolbox. So the first thing you need to do is to drag and drop a card. Then we want a label. So we will put that label inside that card. And we're going to name that label uh, in properties. We're going to name that feedback form. And we're going to change the role to headline. 
This feedback form will ask the users for their name, their email address, and some feedback. We will use labels for the input prompts. Uh, we need to drop three labels. So let's go ahead and drop three labels. So this is the first one, and the second one, and the third one. Name, email, and the last one is for feedback. Okay, so we have name, email, and feedback. Next, we'll need to add two text boxes. So one next to the name, one next to the email, and a text area for the feedback because the number of characters are going to be more than in the email and the name. And here simply we can have a placeholder. So name here, email here, feedback here. And finally, we'll need to drop a button into the page in the properties panel. So Let's go up and have a button and put it here below. And this is going to be the submit button. By the way, if you will double click on the button, you will have here behind the code. This method is called when the button is clicked. All right, so we can customize anything that we want using only Python. There's no HTML or CSS here. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and call that button submit. And let's change the name of the button to be submit underscore button. And also we want the role to be primary color, okay, to give it a blue color. And this is exactly like in bootstrap classes, right? We give primary color or secondary color. All right, great. We have our UI almost ready. And you can run that to check out how it looks like we can call this feedback form. And this is how our application looks like. All right, let's stop that. Now let's go ahead and create our database table. So take a look to the panel on the left. Um, go ahead and click the plus, which is next to services. We'll click on that. Then add data tables, a built-in database that lets you store tables of data in your app. You can see here we have users, email, app secrets, Google API, Facebook API, Microsoft API, SAML authentication, and Stripe for online payments. Click on data tables. Go ahead and add a table. Create new table. We'll call it feedback. And we will need four columns, name, email, feedback, and created on. So new column, add text column. This is a name. We want also email. It's also text column. We want the feedback. And finally, we need created on date. All right, great. The next step we need to take is to create a server module. So we need to create a server module by clicking this plus, which is next to the server code, then add server module. We'll write a server function to add a new row to the feedback data table we just created. So let's go ahead and use that decorator called anvil.server.callable. And below here, we will have a function called add feedback in order to add feedback. And we will take in consideration name, email and feedback as input. Then the app tables, which is imported from the anvil dot tables. The app dot tables dot feedback dot add row because we want to add row. This is a method to add row. Uh, not created on this will be the last we want first the name to be equal to whatever name is entered. Same for email. Same for feedback. And for created on this is going to be equal to date time dot now. And I think this is wrong because space is not allowed and I will need to go to the data tables 
and we will need to adjust that. All right, put underscore between created and on. Fantastic server module. So everything is okay. All right, perfect. So this anvil.server callable decorator allows us to call this function from the client code. And by the way, I will need to import the date time library. So import um, from date time, import date time. Let's go ahead to our form. And let's check out our button. And below here, we have click. So we'll need to access that. Okay or you can just double click on the button itself. And let's just test this. Uh, let's have alert. You clicked a submit button. And if you will click on submit, boom, you clicked a submit button. Okay, now we're sure that there are no errors. Let's go back to code. And what we want to do instead of this alert, we will need actually to capture the user inputs. So we're going to declare a variable called name, we will need name, email and feedback. So name is equal to self dot name underscore box dot text. And I will need an email also. And the email is equal to self dot email underscore box dot text. Same thing for feedback. self dot um, feedback underscore box dot text. Alright, so now we have captured the name, email and feedback that we want to store in the data table. Now we want to call our add feedback server function uh, when the button is clicked, right? And then we want to pass in the user inputs. So we made our feedback, uh, add feedback function available to the client side code by using this callable decorator. All right, so we will use anvil.server.call on the client side here. So let's go ahead and do that. Anvil.server.call. And we're going to call our add feedback function. Add feedback. And we need also other event arguments such as name, email and feedback. And let's go ahead and add notification when the feedback is submitted. Dot show. Also, we want to clear the user inputs once the feedback is submitted, right? And to do that is very, very easy. Uh, we will have a function called clear inputs self as an argument. So self dot name underscore box dot text is set to empty string. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the email and the feedback. All right, perfect. And let's go ahead and call that function in button one click um, self dot clear inputs and self pertains to that specific object. It's very analogous to the word this in JavaScript. Before we just run the app, I want to make sure that these names are the same. So self.name box.txt, self.email underscore box, self.feedback underscore box are the same as uh, the names here. So you see self.text underscore box underscore one. We don't want that. We want to say name underscore box, email underscore box, feedback underscore uh, underscore box. All right, great. And I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So enter name here, email, feedback, great service. And let's click on submit feedback submitted. Great. Now let's go ahead and check out our database tables. We have our name, email, feedback created on everything is stored in the backend server on our database, which is built on top of PostgreSQL. All right, you can leave it at that or we can go even further and send emails. So let's go back to design, then go back to services and add a service, which is the email. And because I've used Anvil before, uh, my email quota has finished. 
So you see here your quota will reset on the first of each month. All right, but you can go ahead and try that and you will be fine. Okay, so what we need to do really is to copy that piece of code and go to our server module, paste that in, and you can add here your email, info at backbrace.com. And let's say John Doe, high quality services and submit you see here email quota exceeded rerouting email to app owner instead of info at backbrace.com you shouldn't have this problem all right guys i hope this video was useful to you and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos please also let me know you can reach me by just dropping a comment or you can send me an email on info at backbrace.com and by the way we have our backbrace discord server you are very welcome to join us we discuss different topics also please don't forget to like this video and share the video with your friends if you liked it thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video take it easy